Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking material from polygon.com, importing it into 3ds Max using our material converter, and then rendering it out with V-Ray. Now, before we head over to Max, let's take a look at the files that we're going to need. There's this one, Wood Flooring 044. Uh, it's one of our free materials on the website. I've already downloaded this and saved it to my hard drive. Um, we'll also be needing the material converter for 3ds Max. I've uh, got that saved as well. The links to both of these will be below the video. Okay, let's head over to Max. Right, now this is the scene we're going to be working on. Uh, it's nice and simple. It's just a floor plane, a camera, and a dome light. Uh, not particularly complicated. <laughs> um, but before we get started adding in our material, we're going to need to install our material converter. Now, I've already got it installed. Um, but to walk you through the process, we need to take the zip folder that's downloaded from the website, in which you'll find a couple of different files. We just need the material converter uh, install file here. Just take that from the zip and drag it anywhere onto the viewport um, within 3ds Max. You'll get a little pop-up confirming the installation. Just click OK on that. And that's it. That's the uh, converter installed. What we do need to do, though, is add a button for it. Um, by default it, it won't do that. So what you'll need to do is go up to Customize, Customize User Interface, and then we go over to Toolbars. Under Category we scroll down and find Polygon, and then you've got this Polygon Converter button to place wherever you like. I've put mine next to my Material Editor because that seemed to make sense. Um, and that's, that's it, that's the converter set up. So now let's move on to actually using it. So we'll click on it and then you get a little uh, box come up with a few different options to choose from. We'll start at the top, which is the textures folder, and this is where you tell the uh, converter where to look for the polygon materials, yeah? Now, you've got two options. You can go down the route of selecting the root folder, which will then go and import every single uh, material in your material library, which you might want to do. Um, in this case though, I just want to bring in the wood flooring one, so I'm actually gonna select that folder, and you can see it says one material was found. So that's that's good, that's what we want. Next option is the rendering choice, or the renderer. Um, by default, it will select whatever's set in your rendering settings. I've already got this set for V-Ray, so it's identified that and selected V-Ray, and it, uh, if you're using one of the others, it sh it'll, it'll pick that as well. But we'll leave it on V-Ray. Uh, under advanced options, the only one we want to address here is use 16 bit maps. Now, some of our, well, the majority of our displacement normal maps in our materials are available in 16 bit, and these are much, much higher quality. Um, uh, really, really important to use these when you've got the option to, which of course we do here. So, uh, yeah, we're good to go. So, let's hit convert. You'll get a little uh, success message come up. Assuming, it's, uh, assuming it works, <laughs> which it should. Um, and then when you go into the material editor, you'll see a temporary library which lists the new material that we've just brought in. So now we need to get this assigned to our floor plane. Now I've already got the floor plane selected. I'm gonna drag the material into our node view here. So we can take a look at what it's done. You can see it's brought it in all the maps and already connected it to the V-Ray shader. So all we need to do is right mouse button and then assign material to selection. Okay, so now our material's uh, assigned to our floor plane. Let's take a look at what it's doing. So I'm gonna hit the render button here. And take a moment for the window to pop up. Um, I'm actually gonna stop that render and just use the, the live preview. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, we do have a minor issue with displacement, not really that minor actually. Um, by default, the uh, material converter will bring in the displacement at a value of 20, um, which you can see in the, the maps values down here within the, within the floor material. Um, that's way too high for this, for this particular uh, material. So what we're gonna do is change that to something like 0.2. There we go. Okay, so we've got our wooden floor looking pretty much how we want it to um, right off the bat with just that that little displacement change. The only thing that I would say needs adjusting is our gloss map. Now if you were to look at a reference picture from the website the reference renders for this material are just 
just just a little bit shinier, less rough, uh, more reflective than what we're seeing here. Um, and that, that's that's perfectly normal. All the different renderers have slight different implementations of PBR, um, and it, sometimes adjustments need to be made, and it's not particularly difficult to do. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here on the gloss map. Now, the easiest way to um, affect what this gloss map is doing is actually to convert it into a roughness map, yeah? And then we're going to be able to use a multiply node on that roughness map, um, and then we'll invert it back into a gloss map to feed into V-Ray, yeah? A, li a little strange, but <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm doing as we do it. So I'm going to go to Maps, uh, General, and I'm going to add in a color correction, okay? I'm going to feed that into, I'm going to feed the gloss map into the color correction, and then that into the gloss map. And we'll see absolutely no difference, which we shouldn't, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is go into the gloss map, and I'm going to invert it which will turn it into a roughness map, which V-Ray doesn't understand. It V-Ray set up to use gloss maps, which is why we've lost all our reflections. But then if we go to the color correction and invert that, that flips it back and we're exactly where we were, okay? So now that allows us to bring in our RGB multiply node, yeah? So I'll stretch that out a little. We'll feed that into color one and then feed that into the color correction there we go. Now this will be our gloss adjust node. This, this is where we'll be able to adjust the amount of reflectivity we're getting from the gloss map. So if I, you can see within this, uh, essentially it's a, a color mix node, um, in, in the top color we've got our gloss input, there's nothing in the, color, in, the, in the bottom input in color 2 there, which means we can adjust this value instead. So if I click on that and then lower it down, we'll see our reflections getting more shiny, like so. Yeah, already that, that's looking pretty good. When you compare it to that, yeah, that's working well. So we'll lower that down to about there, and that is pretty much it for this video. What I will do though is run a final render so we can make sure our floor's looking good. So I'll hit render now, um, and I'll pause the recording. Okay, so that's rendered out now. Um, our displacement value is still too high. Um, that that needs to get toned down a little bit uh, more. Um, but I, I think for the for the purpose of a tutorial, that will, that will uh, that will work. So in summary, we've taken a material from Polygon.com, imported it into 3ds Max using our material converter, made a minor adjustment to the gloss map, and then rendered it out in V-Ray.